quick review of the approach to the treatment of shock. The first step is uh, as airway breathing circulation. So obviously you might have uh, to secure the airway and ventilate the baby because you may reduce the work of breathing that way. And uh, circulation obviously is the key for shock. You have to treat additional parameters like antibiotics and uh, very important to think of the diagnosis so for example a chest x-ray if it's a tension pneumothorax as a differential diagnosis for example so unless it's a clear-cut cardiogenic shock it's good to start with one bolus of 10 ml per kilo and it can be given safely over 20 to 30 minutes while preparing the inotropes if the baby is really down you can give it as a quick push uh, in the labor room situation you would give the bolus as a push uh, I discussed already the concept of permissive hypotension and we should be careful not to allow it to drop too much in that same scenario. A quick bedside echo could give us clues regarding the preload and the pathophysiologic approach could guide us in the appropriate choice of the inotropes as well as whether we need more volume. Uh, hydrocortisone is one of the medications that can be used and obviously the reasoning for giving hydrocortisone is to improve the responsiveness of the uh, newborn especially the premature baby to inotropes uh, the catecholamine responsiveness may be poor in a premature baby and the depleted uh, receptors may be upregulated with hydrocortisone so if the baby has poor responsiveness we consider further fluid bolus blood transfusion correction of contributing factors so medications like bicarbonate to correct the acidosis is a double-edged sword so we should be very careful when we consider using it however at the same time acidosis can uh, affect the myocardial functioning so we may need to some extent maintenance of an appropriate level of calcium is very important avoiding hypoglycemia hypoglycemia is important avoiding hypothermia is important sometimes if a baby on therapeutic hypothermia is very unwell with persisting hypotension we may need to take the decision of aborting the cooling and uh, rewarm the baby quickly to allow the hypotension to be handled so the quick factors, I'm a quick review of the pathophysiology of circulatory compromise and how we can approach. So by singling out the pathophysiology that is affecting a particular baby, we can titrate our response. So in simple terms, blood pressure is a combination of cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance. So we can look into the pathophysiology by looking at whether the factor is coming from a factor which affects systemic vascular resistance. So this may be vasodilatation or vasoconstriction and uh, it may be related to neuroendocrine and paracrine regulatory mechanisms and septic shock may play a role as well. And if it is something to do with cardiac output, cardiac output is a product of heart rate and stroke volume. So anything that impairs the heart rate like an arrhythmia can affect and the stroke volume can be uh, affected by preload, contractility and afterload. So simply put the preload is related to the volume so hypovolemia a diastolic dysfunction where the complaints of the ventricle is uh, affected or a volume overload may contribute the opposite way so contractility is affected in cardiac damage poor contractility and hyperdynamic myocardium afterload is mainly related to the high afterload or a low afterload the high afterload related to hypertension which is rare in newborns and high systemic vascular resistance which is related to the adaptation phase the low afterload uh, vasodilatory conditions so if you look at the parameters the echocardiography and other factors uh, the pulse pressure the systolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure the heart rate all these may guide you to what is happening and whether the peripheral pulses are felt or not in addition to the boluses i mean obviously saline bolus is the first one that we use and uh, if you need repeated uh, boluses sometimes we may use uh, lactated ringer solution or ringer lactate there is no significant role for uh, albumin in the newborn resuscitation and fresh frozen plasma is not routinely indicated unless there is uh, coagulopathy you may consider uh, blood transfusion where there is definite hypovolemia and uh, there are multiple inotropes that we can use and we will be discussing in detail on each one of these uh, separately but you can uh, look at the overall functions and some overlaps as well so there are inotropes which are acting mainly as uh, vasopressors so mainly dopamine and uh, there are uh, inotropes which increase the cardiac output inotrope or chronotrope effect so dobutamine 
and we have combined effect of uh, all these like the chronoinotropic effect and the uh, systemic arterial pressure increasing with dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine and hydrocortisone while uh, slightly increased uh, vaso, I mean vascular, reduced vascular resistance with dobutamine and we have uh, decreased pulmonary arterial pressure with uh, milrinone and uh, a vasoconstrictive effect which is uh, pure with vasopressin and epinephrine as well. In addition, we have to look at the effects on the regional perfusion like cerebral, renal and splachnic. So there are so many overlapping factors which make you decide. Obviously, epinephrine and norepinephrine are very potent. Vasopressin is used mainly for uh, uh, catecholamine resistant blood pressure and milrinone is used in situations where there is uh, raised pulmonary arterial uh, pressure or pulmonary hypertension with uh, a systemic uh, with the condition where you need to use inotropy. So we should be aware that milrinone can cause a drop in blood pressure. So we should have a background inotrope if needed and the loading dose of milrinone is avoided in the newborn period as well. And of course for pulmonary vascular resistance you may need to use inhaled nitric oxide and we also have prostaglandin as an additional tool where the duct may divert the blood flow and may help uh, decompress the effect on whichever chamber we are targeting. So in summary there is no approach that will suit all babies. A careful assessment, constant monitoring and titrating of action is very important. Attention to detail like flushing of the tubings. Uh, the inotrope should be ready to go into the patient and we should avoid periods when the inotrope is not flowing. So we should always have the replacement ready. Uh, act quickly on the findings and change. If you have an invasive blood pressure monitoring, you don't really need to be uh, weaning it very slowly. 10 to 15 minutes is reasonable time. And if the blood pressure is high, that is not good for the baby as well, especially with in a premature baby with altered autoregulation. So wean quickly as well. And sometimes a simple adjustment of the ventilation may be enough. Review whether you really need the sedation that you are using because sedative medications may significantly affect the uh, vascular distribution and they make it very challenging. For example, midazolam, which is used as a sedative, may cause significant third spacing of fluids and uh, the lack of drive from the baby uh, removes the muscle movements and the venous return reduces, so the preload may reduce as well. And an active baby has the endogenic, endogenous peep and the effect of overventilation may be reducing as well. So, hydrogenic problems should be avoided and the uh, outcome depends on the underlying condition. So, whether we use the inotropes or not, the outcome may not change. That's one of the reasons why the studies which compare the effect of inotropes actually may show a worse outcome in the group that received the inotropic treatment. Uh, I hope uh, this is helpful.